buy week recruiting, um, okay. the rising stock of Kiwan Lacey. I want to start there first, but there's a lot I want to get into because Kiwan Lacey mm. is Nebraska's running back commit in this class, four star out of Lancaster, Texas, which is Dallas, mm -hmm. having a great year. Mm -hmm. Lane Kiffin was in his school this week to see him. Great. Florida has offered him. Alabama is talking to him. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things going on with Lacey. Now, Nebraska did get Lacey up here for the Michigan game, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, he was able to come into Lincoln. Uh, but it's going to be a battle, and Nebraska will have a coach down there to see him. Not uh, Matt Rule will not be down there uh, to go see him this week. Uh, but Lacey is a priority because he could play next year. Right. Lacey is a priority. He's the number 16 running back in the country, according to on three on three's rankings. I think when you, when you put the combined rankings, he's 28, whatever, he's a top 30 running back, no matter what I liked him. I liked him right away when I saw his film, cause he's a North and South guy. Um, I, I did notice too, Sean, that the Ole Miss writer for the on three Ole Miss site refer, <laughs> referred to Nebraska's three and three record as putrid. Um, getting a little, getting a, getting a little a zing in at Nebraska as Ole Miss pursues him. Uh, they say that there's sort of a um, the comp, if you will, is Quinshawn Juckins, who's a who's a fabulous Ole Miss back. Yeah, Nebraska, Sean. This is what it, this is what happens though when you're when you're going after one of the top. Hey, Sean, you can make a case that he's the top remaining player, available player. Well, not, I mean, I know he's technically not available. The top player in the 2024 class right now, being that's being still being pursued. Carter Nelson, too. And we'll get into that in a second here. Ooh, Carter Nelson. Yeah, Notre Dame is on him hard. Oh, still. God. So, uh, Kiwan Lacey, though, you're right. I mean, he, he could play immediately next year because Anthony Gratt's gone. Mm -hmm. We don't know about Ramir Johnson. I mean, we assume he's coming back. Mm -hmm. Gabe Irvin, the hip injury, you never know right. how guys come back off those injuries. No, you don't. You don't. So, this is a big one. And this is what happens, though, right? This is what happens. I mean, you, you got to keep recruiting them. And but man, that those SEC teams came are coming hard. Missouri, Florida, Alabama, you mentioned, um, Ole Miss. SEC's coming hard after him. Um, so yeah, he's he yeah he, yeah. Nebraska's gonna have to really really dig in. They got to get him up here again. Okay. I think in October if they can, yeah. or for the Maryland game, it would be nice to get him back again for another home game. Mm -hmm. Hopefully a win. Mm -hmm. The Michigan game wasn't exactly a great day to showcase. No, it wasn't. It was, the environment was good, at least to start. I don't know. And you just it was never, hot. You, you, you've talked to a lot of kids, though. That, that works in Nebraska's favor, probably, the weather that day. You've talked to a lot of kids that they're seemingly unaffected by. A loss. Yeah. Like, they see losses. You know, their schools lose. Um they get around the country. Um, that's maybe part of the their, that that figures into their thought process somewhere. But there's it just always seems like there's things that are far above that relationship with the coaches um, being one. You know what they're telling them about how, how they fit in the offense, stuff like that. It feels like that's bigger. Family, how what the family thinks. They're always looking for a family environment. It seems like. Now, what are other bye week priorities for Nebraska? Yeah, I think, what is uh, Grant Bricks, Logan Magnolia still remains uncommitted. Um, big I would, mystery, right? Uh, big mystery. Brian Munson talked to him this week. Um, really, no update. I mean, his it's almost like he's gone backwards with his timeline and his process. Hmm. What do you make of that? He's a he's just wired differently. How he's handling his recruiting process. Um, hmm. He hasn't been on trips during the season. He's just kind of sitting back. I mean, I do think Nebraska is probably the team to beat. Um, I would expect Matt Rule will swing by Logan Magnolia here this week um, to see him. So uh, keep your eyes on Grant Bricks and kind of how that plays out because uh, he's obviously a, a big target here for Nebraska down the stretch. Is Carter Nelson, is that a something to watch? Yeah, and then Carter Nelson, Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Matt Rule out there to watch him play Friday. And Notre Dame is on him hard. Uh, they had a coach, um, one of their recruiting staff members, is able to travel because they have an assistant coach um, that is not traveling right now for a health reason. So that recruiting staff member flew into El flew into Omaha or wherever he went to, and then went out to Elgin to Elgin to watch him to play. watch a Class D two Nebraska high school football game. I like him. Um, so they, they they clearly want him. They're trying to get him to come back out again. They're on him hard. I mean, and you know, he talks that you know. Like, I think it for Carter, 
you've been to Eld- you've been out to Ainsworth a few times sure. now. How hard do you think it is to get to South Bend to Ainsworth when you play Friday nights? It's not easy. No. So that is the one advantage Nebraska has. And, and Carter Nelson has been to every Nebraska home game. Hmm. It just seems like it would be a massive upset for Notre Dame to come in and steal him at this point. Well, there's just this mentality. Like, Nebraska is kind of vulnerable right now with where their program's at. And these bigger programs like Notre Dame or Old Miss, they they just, like, think that they can just come in and, and you know, it's like coming in and taking your girlfriend. I'm better looking. I'm going to take your girlfriend right, right now in front of you. It, <laughs> and, and I mean, that, that's what they do. They it like, like that. Yeah. I mean, they're like, why are you dating her? Why are you dating him? Yeah. I'm going to come in and just take you right now. And, uh-huh. and that's what Notre Dame's trying to do. That's what Ole Miss is trying to do. And, you know, putrid three and three record. That's what, that's what the Ole Miss guy wrote. That's what the Ole Miss guy wrote. Yeah. That, that seems a little editorializing. <laughs> it's a recruiting update. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was in, I'm telling you, Sean, I read it right before I got on here. That was in the recruiting update. Nebraska's putrid three and three record. Yeah, all's fair in love and war, apparently. But I, um, I, I, come on, Notre Dame, can they come in and steal Nebraska's, the, the number one player in the state of Nebraska? I, I got to think that's a long shot. Notre Dame's about to go down again, by the way. That'd be their third, lo- it'll be their third loss if they lose to USC on Saturday. Yeah. And- They've lost to Louisville. Of course, they lost to Ohio State. I mean, they're not tearing it up right no, now. I mean, they're, it, the line is thin for them, but yeah, they're not in a conference. So like they're out of it at this point. I mean, anyway, um, what else, what else is the deal, Sean? Yeah. You, you know, your, your coaches will be out Thursday and Friday this weekend. You know, this is really the only time they'll get out in full force. You know, I would imagine high school, Nebraska state championship games. They'll have coaches present at some of those in Memorial stadium. If they, mm-hmm. if they have days left, I mean, you only get so many days that you can be out on the road. And you're going to watch kids that are committed. And, and what you're looking for, I, I believe, I mean, I've heard coaches say this, is you're looking for these kids that you already have. You're, you're, you're trying to, to gauge if they're still working hard. Are they having good years? Are they, are they in good shape? Are they, are they fully dialed in? Or did they relax after they got the – after they made their commitment. So you're watching that because Sean, you want them to continue to develop. I mean, you don't want them to go stale. I always thought Texas, remember Texas with Mac would sign those classes really early. And I think those, some of those kids went kind of stale. And by the time they got to campus, they were stale. Um, it's they don't, you don't want that now, to happen. You have to sign classes early because mm-hmm. of the December signing period. But, so you want to stay on the kids and say, Hey, come on. I mean, I know, we know that you're locked in here, but that doesn't mean we don't, you can relax, right? Right. Oh, no doubt. I mean, another guy I want to bring up, they're not probably going to be out to see him. Maybe they will. I don't know. We don't know this for sure. Alex Mansky, the 2025 quarterback oh, at Algona, one. Iowa. He's thrown 25 touchdowns and no interceptions. So get this 86 completions, 25 are touchdowns. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and he's an excellent runner. I mean, he's, he's a big physical Josh Allen type player. So, that is kind of their number one quarterback for the future. And I mean, there's some people that think he's, I mean, he's better than Caitlin. It's, when you look at the body of work and what he's doing, I mean, last week he was 12 of 17 for 245 and three touchdowns. That's that, that's that kid that me and Abby saw at camp, right? That you missed. <laughs> Good God. You're still writing uh, about somebody else. The Bellevue West backup. Yeah. yeah but he, he's their number one 2025 quarterback. They okay. offered him at camp um, and, and he's having a huge year. So, I would imagine if they're not there this week, they will be down there very soon. Um, and the thing with Alex Mansky is, will, will he get some of the bigger offers? Well, Notre Dame, will a Ohio, not Ohio State, maybe a Michigan or someone like that, will those types of teams come on him? Mm-hmm. Or will he stay more regionalized? Okay. Well, that's something to watch. All right, Alex Mansky is a big name right now. 